TitleMatchNetwork.com. Because, you know, like Hulk and I and Scott, and like that, we, there was a, a mesh there. And it was uh, going to, to work on Mondays was like it was a, it was a party. You know, it was, you know, because we'd run and go get Hogan and Macho's locker room, Macho's locker room, because they had beer. And if we were in there drinking, it'd be like, they kicked and be like, where's it? It's not even ours. It's not even slurs. Talk, talk to Hulk. It's not Hulk's beer. There is no alcohol policy. <laughs> And at one time, we, me and him were at, at uh, spring break down in Panama City, and we came in all hammered. Bishop was coming after us. We had big suitcases of, of, of Budweiser, Bud Light, or something. We ran, and they were like trying to catch us. We run into Hogan's. Oh, but it, it was your idea to stop at the beach store on that. Yeah, we got like four oh, shorts and spring break outfits. <laughs> Everybody else is in their wrestling gear, NWO shirts and tights and boys. <laughs> How are you going to be? We had spring Didn't you break. get the memo? It's spring break! So we run into the Hogan. The ring is in the middle of a swimming pool. Yeah. We, run into Hogan, we run into Hogan's trailer and hand like Hogan the beer, like boom, boom, boom. That ball goes, that's how it's shh, shh. We're halfway through the beer, we're laughing, all of a sudden the door kicks up, Bishop sticks his head in, he looks, and there's Hogan with a beer in his hand with the rest of us. <laughs> and that's not the, and that, was, that was the night when Bishop comes up to me in Panama City, one of those spring breaks, comes up to me and goes, you going in? I said, in the pool? I said, yeah, I'm going to have giant press me, throw me in the pool, make sure nobody else goes in. He goes, no, I'm into, re into rehab. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted me to go to rehab, and I said, no. I said, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. Getting back to um, Hogan, did two of you guys get along with him, or did you guys butt heads a lot with uh, booking moves? I think it took a while, you know. We, we traveled so much on those. I don't know about, I'm not going to speak for Scott on this, but I'm sure, you know, that you'll probably agree with me, that uh, we spent so much time on those private planes back then. They would go down and get Hogan, and then come and get um, Randy, and then come get Scott, and then come get me. Well, actually, no, fucking, we'd have, me and Scott would have to drive someplace, because, you know, they wouldn't, you know, we're not picking up both of you. you. I'd have to fly someplace. But uh, but we'd spend a lot of time just on those leers, that, you know. We drank and partied, and that is a way to travel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they don't. I mean, they, they, you know, they wait for you. You know, there's no rush to do the airport. No, nah, it's just like you want to have a, you, know, you want to stop at the strip club and have a couple of cocktails before you get on the plane at night. They got to wait. Yeah, on the way to the match. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, all of a sudden it became a situation where. You know, you look at a guy and you're like, well, he's not one of the boys. Like, Hogan's not one of the boys anymore because, you know, we're still driving around the tours, making towns and shit. But then all of a sudden you get thrown in that and you realize it's like, you know, you're, you're going to become whatever your, your, your process is. And, and you become accustomed to those things. And, yeah, all of a sudden it's like, all of a sudden we weren't like the rest of the boys in the locker room. And it, it, it wasn't that we had changed. But it's like the mode of transportation had changed, the viewpoint from other people, the perception that other people had of looking in at us, that he and I were the same two prick jackoffs we were, you know, and, and when we met and, and shit was a 91. Well, you know what they say too, that just made me think of that old thing where they say, you know, there's, there's how other people see you, how you see yourself, and how you really are. You know? So who knows? I mean, and, and see, the thing about us is like, we didn't care. No. I, I just as soon get along with everybody. But if I don't, I don't really care because I already have a couple friends. You know, and that's, if you to me, if you got a couple of close buddies through thick and thin, like that's all that's all I need. You know, I mean, especially in the, in, the, in, the, in a wrestling environment, if you get and especially with Kev's a special kind of. You guys ever have a sense that you couldn't totally trust uh, Hogan? I speaking for myself, I was. Uh, I'm ashamed to admit, I was really envious and you know, I guess jealous of, of Hulk. You know, I mean, as a lover, well, as a, as a performer, you no. Know, but I mean, I, I like when I saw when I, I used to stand next to Bischoff and go, and when, when he was in a ring, and watch and go. Uh, 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 <laughs> and he's, uh, he's three times better than me. Uh, you know, and but you know, they knew he was making. You know, Hulk was making it like a million bucks a, a month back then. But you know, so then, he's twelve times better than us, right? But then, <laughs> when you get around him, it's not his fault. <clears throat> you know, God bless him for getting it because that paves the way for other guys to get it. And <clears throat> we always said he he can do his part. Like when we talked about Warrior earlier, 
book him with the right guy, man, Hulk can do his part. You know, for most of his career, he was a hero and he won. And he was great at doing that. Being a, being a villain, being a heel is a little bit diff, diff, more, it's different. It's a little more difficult. And you got to make that guy. Yeah. And you got to yeah. be there for the comeback. And yeah, that wasn't really his no, forte. But he did it. He did it the best he could. Yeah. I mean, so I, he, I, I would think. I think that, we went out of our way to protect it because we featured him where you don't get to Hulk. Right. And they made to make it even more like you never got to Hulk. Right. Because it was a it was the right thing to do. And we, we knew it felt. Yeah, we looked at it too with the dynamic at that time, you know, it was like for the younger demographic, we kind of came across because there, you know, there's not a whole lot of, of, of really like black characters on TV. We almost had like that kind of a thug you know, street cred type thing going on. And then we gave that, you know, we gave that rub to Hulk. At the same time, he gave us that incredible iconic, like, wow, Hogan's bad and Paul and Nash are with him. So, I mean, it gave us an immediate, I mean, as far as if you look at mainstream, you know, it, it, it was such a, so, but I remember the first time we went to Universal and did a, uh, some promos and fucking Hogan went on like an eight hour rant. We took a break and we went over the corner. We went, this ain't going to fucking work. Cause, <laughs> yeah, you know, he and I are sound like guys. <laughs> Remember the time he showed up? It was that the time he showed up with the Nick had the fucking wolf Hollywood's wolf pack, airbrush t shirt and stuff. He went fucking out. Because I I wanted the wolf pack is Kev, myself, and Kid. Because we'd given up our identities basically when we left Vince. That was what was so sweet about us leaving together, was we were the outsiders, Razor and Diesel. Right. You know, but we're the outsiders. I don't care what you call us. You know, just, the paychecks always said Sky Hall. They never right. said Razor. No, they never said either. But so I wanted that Wolfpack thing because I was ripping off the Freebirds. I was a huge Freebird part. And you were talking about being late that time. You know, my, you know the Michael Hayes one. Yeah. I just said it today. Did you? I swear right today. I said it. So oh, no, yeah, Michael. Michael. <laughs> oh, I didn't know what you meant. That's what I said. I was going to be so I was going to come in with Jack Daniels. Right? No, I said, no, it was me, but just now you're like, You'd be so late, I'm just happy to see you. Yeah, don't be five minutes late. He said, kid, don't be five minutes late. You scream at him. See, if you're going to be late, be an hour late. Then they're just happy you showed up. And right. it's true. It is true. But anyway, we were doing that. There was one interview segment thing going on where I had to throw the penalty flag, like personal foul, gimmick infringement. Hey, you're the man, all that stuff. But you know what? No, it's not Hollywood's Wolfpack. You're not in the Wolfpack. We're the Wolfpack. Yeah, we're yeah. Hollywood. Yeah, like, yeah. And because everything, I felt like I learned so much about creative pr- property and intellectual property through that lawsuit deal. Yeah. That anytime we said anything, like we started that for life, we stole from Mac 10, from listening to Yoko's Yoko's music on the back of that. Exactly. That. And, we, and Too Sweet and all that stuff. And then we'd come to TV next week and be on a t shirt. But we're not getting we're not paid. Getting we're paid. not getting royalties. Right. So it's our catchphrases, but but you know they're taking it as and their intellectual life. property oh, because we're too saying too it on their on their show. You know, I had to end up you know years and years later in, in, in about a hundred thousand dollars of legal fees on my behalf to go to go after them and get you know to get my money to get some merchandise money back. I had to sue. You know, at that point, it was Universal Wrestling Holdings or whatever the fuck it was. But The main reason, too, besides thinking it was a cool name, I chose Wolfpack because because of the fact that I thought, well, North Carolina State owns this. They won't be able to rip this off. Yeah, you can't. So they couldn't put Wolfpack on anything. And we were Wolfpack, anyway, with the Umas ODO. So they came out with these red shirts with the, red, with the wolves on them, and they sold like crazy. So now... If you're going to split up Paul and Nash and Hogan and Savage, you know, who are you going to put together? Right. It seems like it'd be natural us against them, two generations against each other, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no. That's how slick they were, boy. Bang. I'm not even, my creative property, now I'm not even in the Wolfpack. I'm in Hollywood black and white. I'm in uh, NWO black and white with Hogan. (laughs) <laughs> but, but I mean, remember that time you kept Barry and Randy on an interview, you wouldn't put him up for <laughs> You said, you're the man or something, you're supposed to say something to me. Yeah, I wouldn't do it. Titlematchnetwork.com